Hi, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with someone who has worked in the world of comics, animation, film, lots of visual literacy coming your way, and that is creator Mike Vosberg. May, may I call you Mike? Is that okay? Yes. All right. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for jumping in. Thanks for joining. I usually start by naming a few titles. You have quite a range, quite an, an assortment. Uh, a Sisterhood of Steel being one of the first that comes to mind in the fantasy and comics realm, as well as uh, Marvel Comics, She-Hulk being one of those, as well as Punisher and a number of other titles. Tales from the Crypt, of course, The Crypt Keeper, uh, and then much work in the world of animation and film as well, um, Narnia being one of those. So with all those things, it's a gradual progression. I mean, I started out in comics because that's what I was familiar with. I had no art training. So uh, it was a great place to uh, have a job, get paid, and learn how to draw at the same time. Um, okay. And with each one of those different fields, you, you learned and you brought in different things. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If I had a criticism of comics, it's that um, – you bring more to the field when you go out and you do something different rather than just, you know, continue to, to, uh, to do the one thing all, uh, all your life. Um, yeah. And um, for me, I started out, God, very early in, in a, you know, I, I met a friend in high school uh, or in, in actually in uh, sixth grade, uh, Fred Jackson, mm -hmm. who, um, you know, showed me, he's like, Hey, yeah, I do my own homemade comics. And I was like, wow, how do you do those? And so, you know, he, he kind of showed me and we started doing them back and forth and, and trading them. Uh, you know, it's, it's like they were, they were really basic, you know, really, you know, kind of crude oh, stuff. Awesome. I love that you still have that too. I oh, love that. I, believe me, you know, uh, when I have a fire, that's the first thing I would grab. It's, it's like <laughs> everything else is like, eh, you know, it's like I can be replaced, but, mm -hmm. um, there were only one copy of that book when it came out. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exclusive edition. <laughs> but um, I didn't learn much about drawing for the first couple of years, but I learned a lot about storytelling because that was really, um, I, I loved reading when I was a kid. I read everything. And um, so comics were fun. Um, but basically when I started reading books, my interest in comics really kind of went down quite a bit because I love the artwork. I mean, the artists in comics, uh, you know, the guys I, I like, you know, like Joe Kubert and Leonard Starr and uh, God, you know, it's any number of, um, I was always fascinated with their, with their works and their drawings, but mm -hmm. um, there wasn't anything I read in comics that competed with what I was reading in books. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, my favorite comic when I was a kid was one called Classics Illustrated. Yeah. And I think that was the first one I actually collected because you could get all the back issues by by sending him and uh, and I love those and those inspired me to you know go out and read the books then. Um, I love that. So, um, so that was kind of where I started and and then in high school, um, I was fortunate enough to live in a Detroit area where we had Jerry Bales, who was basically the father of comic fandom, mm -hmm. um, and. So, you know, I, I remember calling him up one time and talking and, and uh, you know, finding out a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, and, and he would have these, you know, get togethers once in a while, you know, and uh, just meeting him and seeing him and talking with him was really a big boost for me in terms of, uh, gosh, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. Other than, you know, drawing these, um, you know, these little comics. So, I mean, I could really see from the time. I, I got interested in Jerry and comic fandom. My art over the next year and a half, just I actually started to work at it other than just, you know, doing, doing kid scribbles. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he had the very first gathering of comic book fans that I knew of in, uh, in 1963. And um, I, I got to meet everybody I was working with on my fanzine. Cause they're, you know, most, most of the guys, they, they traveled in from as far as Nebraska. I think we had about 25 or 30 people. Mm -hmm. Um so um, the only one who didn't make the meeting was was uh, um, Roy Thomas at the time. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was, uh, you know, everybody else was around. And it was great to meet these guys because um, 
especially the artist, they kind of took me to the next step in terms of, you know, um, this is what I'm trying to do mm-hmm. and I'm still not getting work. So you have to be at least this good, you know, um, you know, just to start out. And um, over the next few years, Detroit really became a hotbed for, oh, geez, there's Rich Buckler, Jim Starlin, Al Milgram, Terry Austin, uh, Tom Morzakowski, myself, uh, mm-hmm. Mike Besser, um, you know, the list just goes on. Uh, Arvell Jones. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and we all, you know, fostered each other. You know, you gave, you know, you look at stuff, you gave them advice on drawings, or if you were working, you're saying, hey, this is, this is what, you, you know, how you got to get it to that stage or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, for me, you know, coming out of a Pontiac, Michigan was a factory town. So the idea that I was going to draw comics for a living was, I could have told people I was going to, you know, go to Hollywood and be a movie star. It was the mm-hmm. same kind of like, you know, it was a pipe dream. Mm-hmm. Um and so in college, I mean, like, you know, I got my degree and was, you know, started a teaching job. Um, and um, I hadn't seen Styland for two or three years because he'd been in the Navy. And uh, when he got back out, he's back in Detroit. And we got together and he said, yeah, I'm working for Marvel Comics now. And that made it real for me because, I mean, it was it was like, you know, I wasn't at Jim's level, but I could see like, wow, you, you could actually go and get work and, you know, get a job. So mm-hmm. um after about three years of teaching, when I retired, that became my focus was to try and get my work to a level where I could start getting work. And again, very fortunate. I was a time when comics were kind of booming and there was a lot of work. So um, um, even I managed to get in there. So it was a, uh, it was great. Um, I remember the, the first job that I got was from a, a, a an editor at Gold Key Comics and Paul Kuhn. And he's looking at my work and he's going, well, I really don't know much about comics, but you seem like a very nice young man. So I'll give you you know, a story to do. <laughs> and like, I mean, you don't know much about comics because, you know, you've hired me here. So, um, <laughs> but, but everybody I worked with after that, they became my new teacher. <laughs> so I had an incredible education because I had some really talented people that, I worked around and, you know, you had Simonson and Chaikin and, you know, go to Neil Adams studio and, and, uh, you know, you see Dick Giordano and Jack Abel was always really, you know, excellent. And even when you went into the companies, uh, uh, strangely enough, I never got a lot of art advice um, when I was working in comics, except, you know, drawn to Marvel style or, you mm-hmm. know, look at Jack Kirby. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the one guy who really, focused on art and how to improve your art and design was Joe Orlando. Um, he was a big help to me that way. Um, I, I think the, for me working in comics, the most difficult thing was um, all the work being done when was based, was uh, superheroes. Um, mm-hmm. When I first broke in, I did a few mystery stories for, for uh, Charlton and gold key and even Marvel. Um, but you know, by 73, 74, 75, it was all superhero. Yeah. And I could do that work, but it wasn't my, you know, uh, it wasn't one of my strengths. Um, so um, when I moved to California, like starting to work in animation uh, was great just because I was starting to do like action adventure stories with uh-huh. G.I. Joe. Um, and um, I'm trying to think what else was on there. Um, uh, we did what I think I did a, a some even a, a, was it Johnny Quest and mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. but um, again it was another learning experience with with like mm, the the difference between comics and animation doing storyboards for animation mm-hmm. uh, and. I had always been far more influenced by movies and going to movies as a kid um, than comics. I mean, I read comics, but I wasn't um, focused on them the way uh, like, like, you know, a lot of the young, the other guys in my age were at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it took me longer to kind of break in once I, once I, you know, jumped into the whole comics profession. Um, but when I moved into animation, it was it was a simple move because 
I've been looking at movies all my life in terms of how's that done? What's that? Uh, <laughs> so I was far more conversed in that. Um, and, um, and like I said, that animation after drawing for comics, I didn't have to work very hard on the drawing for animation. It was much simpler. Uh -huh. um, what you did have to work for harder at though, was the storytelling and the setups, um, you know, all these little things about filmmaking. Um, you know, you don't want to do jump cuts where, and, and, you know, if you've got two people on one side of the screen, you don't want to make a cut and then they're on the other side, you know, just confusing things like that. If uh -huh. they're moving in this direction on one scene in the next scene, it continues, they should still be moving in that direction. Um, but I mean, it, it, you know, it wasn't rocket science and, yeah. A lot of the stuff, like I said, you you intuitively knew because you'd been watching it for years um, on the screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, it, it, you know, it, it it was more or less like it, it was, um, uh, you know, confirmed for you in terms of, yeah, she's supposed to be doing that. You had um, already done your homework at that point. <laughs> uh, hopefully. Yeah. And, and yeah. movie boards were even better than for me because – Comics and animation, you were always, they wanted you to draw in a style. Mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're doing animation, you were supposed to draw the characters like, you know, like the cartoon characters they looked like. Uh, you know, whether, whether they're action adventure characters or funny animals, whatever. Um, whereas for movies, everything had to be drawn realistically. And that was my strength. So like doing boards for movies was, was um, um, you know, kind of like a dream come true for me. Nice. Um, my frustration was that um, I wasn't in the union at the time. Mm -hmm. So to try and get more storyboarding jobs was difficult because it was the old, you know, uh, uh, vicious circle of how do you get work? You're in the union. How do you get in the union? You have work. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't, you know, it wasn't like you, uh, you would even get an apprenticeship at the time where you could bring in your work and show it around. And um, you either, you know, you just had to kind of luck into a job where they got grandfathered in and you were working for them. Um, and even like the Narnia films that I worked on, they were non-union projects at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, uh, like I said, I, I love doing that stuff. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine rewarding to get to adapt someone like C.S. Lewis and some of those beloved stories that, that have just been around for decades. Yeah, it was very interesting for me because C.S. Lewis, I knew as a philosopher, mm -hmm. I studied, you know, his books, uh, in, you know, in, in college. And I'd had, I remember a friend when I lived in Battle Creek, Michigan would always talk about, you know, the, you know, all oh, the Narnia stories are great. And I read in my kids and I was like, I've never heard of them. You know? mm -hmm. so, so it was interesting to work on the, uh, on the stories. And again, cause if I hadn't worked on the movies, I probably never would have went and saw them. Um, yeah. and, and not to demean the quality of the work, because I think they're great films, mm -hmm. but it's just, like, you know, they, they, they weren't what I was interested in. I mean, like today, I, I don't go see horror films because it's, it's like, you know, it, it's, it's just not my taste, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, they were, like I said, working on those films. Great. Yeah. Uh, I am also a film lover and I'm curious about, um, what drew you into the world of, of cinema? I, I guess I look at all art as your way of explaining who you are mm -hmm. and how you see the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on pictures, you draw it and you put it on a, you know, a, a board, you know, or you put it on the wall and somebody looks at it with film. You're taking a series of pictures the same way in comics. I guess you could say you're taking a series of pictures and those pictures, when they're put together, all tell a story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and for me that really is the beauty and the essence of comics is you can be a six year old kid and you can be making your own little comics that go from panel to panel um, and start doing on those or you can take those comics and convert them into whatever form you want mm -hmm. if I was going to make a movie I could sit down and I could draw a little comic book and take it in to the producer and, and pitch it to him. It's like, okay, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have to read it. He just has to look at it to get the eye, you know, and the difficult thing is, and it's not to demean the, the words, but the pictures really have to tell the story. 
Mm -hmm. um, and creating the same depth in a series, you know, in a story with a series of pictures, as opposed to doing it with a, you know, a series of words in a book is a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you, you always have to remember that if you're, if you're, if you're writing something or you've done a comic book, it's in one form when it's going to be in a film, whether it's on TV or in the movies, it's going to be shown in a different form. I mean, it's, it, you can't get into what the character's thinking for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to see how he reacts. Um, so, I mean, and the beauty of comics is, like I said, you can be a 10 year old kid and, and God, with the tools you have now with the, you know, iPad and iPhones, and whatever else you can turn out a fully blown illustrated story. And like I said, print it, show it around, do whatever you're going to do with it. Um, and you can get a response to that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and so while there might be a handful of um, people who are still working, who can actually make a living drawing comics, um, you know, cause there's, there's a certain amount of work there, but I, I'm still astounded. Like, in fact, after this class is over, I've got a, you know, one of young neighbors coming by because he, you know, we, we do an art session, you know, together mm -hmm. where he shows me what he's working on. And I talk about, you know, continuity and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I find kids are just fascinated with manga and comics. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's like, you know, I, I'm always thinking like, do they realize that industry died in the nineties? You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so anyway, it's, it's, like I said, for me, I retired seven or eight years ago, but I still draw every day. I still breed every day. I still, you know, paint, do whatever. Um, yeah. You know, basically, my life hasn't changed. I just make a lot less money at it now, <laughs> which is by choice. You know, I don't, um, I don't really have to deal with the other. So, um, yeah. so when I work on projects now, it's exactly what I want to do. Whether they're comic books, I mean, I'm just working now on a, a, a story. And I was like, I was a big fan of the Twilight Zone. So oh, I yeah. I created my own, you know, environment called Voodoo Mansion. And the conceit of Voodoo Mansion is every time you go through that doorway there, uh -huh. you don't know where you're going to end up. Um, nice. So it's it's like, this is kind of, you know, this is in the in the beginning stage. Eventually, the you know, the more finished pages will look like this. And um, I'll scan them in, color them add you know add you know add the words um awesome. so, i mean i continue to do that and um you know, like on my website i have a place you know my own reading room where all the comics i created you can go and you can read them there mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, so um that's at my uh my vaz art site um, yeah. and the same thing is is all of my uh real art paintings of, of different hollywood scenes I put all those on, you know, so they're all available on my website. And that's just, um, it's an interesting way to stay connected that way, to get some kind of reaction from your work and, and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. You anticipated my question of what you're working on now and where we can find it. I love it. <laughs> like I said, the big thing is, is like I said, I continue to, to put stuff on the Vaz art site. So, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of, um, I'm finding more and more everything is becoming so fractured that it's, it's like, as you're, when you're working on an artist, you're suddenly turning into Robinson Crusoe and, and hoping somebody finds that bottle you send out. Right. Um, I'm, I'm amused that, um, you know, when I started out my first fan scene, I think I had the first issue was like 175 copies. And at the end of issue six, I think I had a, a thousand of them printed and sold. Wow. And, yeah. You know, and then I moved into comics and that went from, you know, like a few hundred people to, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands. And then you get into animation, and it goes into millions. And, and then you get into the Narnia films, you're thinking like, oh, you know, maybe a billion people who've seen that film. Yeah. And yeah. now I've come back and retired and, 
if 20 people see the stuff that I'm doing every week, it's like you know, <laughs> right back at the bottom again in terms of the skills are still there. Mm -hmm. But um, um, and for one thing, I, I'm simply not interested in doing all the business and promotional work that you right. need to get your work out in front of people. Yeah. So, uh, so when people, you know, comment on my stuff, I'm always pleasantly surprised that like, oh, have somebody seen it? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's probably the best approach to take, I imagine. And you mentioned working on projects that you truly want to, um, for, for you and for your own creative benefit. So, uh, probably a, a wonderful approach there as well. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's right now, the big thing I'm working on is the, the Voodoo Mansion series. All, those are all short stories, and um, you know, they're, they're hosted by this kind of weird couple. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, they're more comedic, and then they've got the stories, which might be really dark, uh, and then they you know, end up back at the, uh, you know, at the mansion again. And, and you know, for me, they're just fun to do, so yeah. uh, they create an outlet that way. Yeah. If people actually read them, Wow, that's that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have one more official question, and then we can hit anything that we missed. You were talking about um, some of the collaboration, some of the support, and the the network that you were working in and have worked in, which is I, I always love hearing about that. I'm curious if there's anyone that you sort of fostered along who's. Uh, work you're particularly you, you look at fondly and you're particularly proud of their progress i guess all of the the assistants that i work for i'm really proud of them and mostly they've gone in different directions i mean i've got mm -hmm. one um um scott gordon who's, whose mother is actually works in the industry she's a costumer she works for reba and uh, she worked on the nanny and oh, nice. she's actually president of the uh, of, of that union now uh but anyway scott has He's a fabulous artist and he's become a, uh, you know, he does um, basically props and uh, creates scenery and things for film. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think if I had, I'm not sure that I had anyone who worked with me who went on to work in comics because again, the jobs were getting narrower and narrower. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it's always, I, I guess it's more from the other direction. I'll, you know, you know, you'll give talks from time to time mm -hmm. and you'll see kind of all these people sitting there kind of going, <laughs> going oh, boy, that was, you know, that one bombed. And I, I mean, when I was working in animation, all of a sudden I had people come up and go like, Hey, I was at your class when I, you know, the other was a man, I learned so much. And I really tried to put it and I'm, I'm astounded. Like, Oh really? You know, that's, <laughs> that's not the, so from that point of view, that's always great to hear. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess I had another, another, uh, uh, assistant who only worked for me for a short time he was kind of funny because he'd wander in and out but um i just uh had some kind of a flyer that that he sent out that he just uh directed this uh, new movie out called uh the nun you know oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh -huh. okay and i'm going well you know good for you yeah. so uh, uh, but yeah working working with people who That was really kind of the exciting part of it, especially like Tales from the Crypt, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. where I had to draw the covers. I literally got to meet everybody who was working in TV at the time because they come in and they do a guest appearance and you had to take photos of them. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that was, and, and directors the same way. That was um, uh, really great. Um, from my point of view, like working with Shaken um, was probably the best education that I got in terms of comics you know, really a lot about not just about comics, but the whole concept of design and, and, you know, and, and putting some of these things together that, uh, that really moved my art uh, forward. And it's like for the past 25 years, I've been going to a figure drawing. It's just a group of us that get together and um, uh, Bill Stout hosts it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what I've learned from Bill um, over the years of, of, you know, just his sense of professionalism and the kind of things that he does. And it's, uh, um, like I said, that's basically my social life now, mm -hmm. but also just in terms of what I've learned from, you know, it's like, we have like Dean Yeago is there in the class with us. And, um, uh, uh, we used to have, um, um, uh, trying to think Dan Guzay who used to do a lot of movie posters. So there are always mm -hmm. people like this that you're going like, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I love the creative community, love the support. And uh, yeah, the, I should have mentioned American Flag as well. One of those uh, notable works of yours. I, I was trying to do a quick rundown and it occurred to me after I kind of got into the talk with you, American Flag, also uh, a book that you worked and I on say, for. It's a notable book for Howard. Yes. You know, I, it, was, it was fun <laughs> doing it. And I, like I said, I learned a lot. But ba basically, I mean, that book is so intrinsically Howard. And mm -hmm. um, see, for my money, I don't think there's been another comic book from that time that ever approached kind of what he was doing with that, you know. Um, I mean, he really took comics and brought them into the adult sensibility, not with just adult material, but mm -hmm. with adult stories of contemporary things that were going on. Yeah. Um, and and um, uh, like I said, they were witty. They were they were suspenseful. They were action. You know, they're great stuff. Yeah, yeah. definitely a, a creator who knows what he's doing and does it well for sure. Yeah. Um, well, I promised you a brief talk. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to share before we close out? Uh no. Just again, if if um, uh, um, I don't know when you actually publish this if you just put my 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 Bazard site up there so you can you know push that absolutely uh, you know it's always nice to have a few more people drop by and go yeah. wow this guy's still alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i will absolutely put the site uh both in a pop-up box on the video as well as in the description and uh mike great to to meet you and i appreciate your time and work so very much all right thank you jason it's a uh, it's these are a pleasure to do. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I'm so glad and, and glad you agreed to be on. So thank you again. All right. Take care.